In today's video, we're going to discuss binomial distributions as well as provide a worked example. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is a binomial distribution? Well, a binomial distribution is a discrete probability model that models discrete events. So a discrete event is something that can be counted. Um, typically, it reflects uh, a numerical value such as one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Importantly, it's different than a continuous model. We'll talk about continuous models a little bit later, but for now, we'll focus on that a binomial distribution is a discrete probability model. So when might you use a binomial distribution? Well, typically when we use a binomial distribution, we're, in, we're working with problems that have a, a binary response, a yes or a no, a win or a loss, a success or failure, and so on and so forth. So we can look at this equation and we can break this down into some manageable steps. <clears throat> so what we have here is that the probability that x is equal to x. So x is equal to some random variable, um, uh, our, our variable of interest. So perhaps it's the, the number of wins in a season is equal to x. Um, that's some numerical value that we are interested in for the variable x is equal to n factorial, where n is your number of trials. Remembering that factorial, if we have 5 factorial, this is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now, ultimately, you're going to have to learn how to use the factorial button on your calculator because it will become cumbersome to type in 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 if it was example for 5 factorial. <clears throat> So we have n factorial divided by x factorial, where x is equal to the number of successes or your variable of interest. And this is where we let x is equal to x. So whatever x is equal to, that's x factorial, times n minus x factorial. Um, so your sample size or the number of trials minus the number of successes or your variable of interest factorial times the probability of success, that is p, Right, so p to the probability to the power of our number of successes times q to the power of n minus x, which is also equal to our number of non-successes or our number of failures. Now, really importantly here, we're going to be typically given either p or q, and we have to know that there's a relationship between p and q, and that is that q is equal to 1 minus p. Therefore, p is equal to 1 minus q. So if we know p, we can solve for q. If we know q, we can solve for p. We also need to know our summaries for our binomial distributions. So we can calculate our expected value, also known as mu, as simply equal to n times p where n is equal to our number of trials and p is our probability of success. Our variance is equal to n times p times one minus p, which is also equal n times p times q, right? Remembering that q is equal to one minus p. And then finally, our relationship between standard deviation and variance holds true here that the standard deviation is equal to the square root of the variance. So the standard deviation of x is equal to the square root of n times p times q, which is also equal to the square root of the variance of x. So the best way to learn something is to dive into a practice problem. So let's go ahead and do that. So Let's consider a binomial experiment with four trials and p equal 0 0.4. We have a number of things that we're asked to do in this question, so the only way that we can do that is to just get started. So we're asked to draw a tree diagram for this experiment, so we can do that. So let's go ahead and draw our tree diagram here. So we have a Let's just call this a win and a loss. And we know that this occurs with a 0.4 as our probability of success. 
and 0 0.6 is our probability of loss. So that's one trial. We then have our second trial. We're either going to win or lose. So again, this is gonna happen, probability of 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. We're gonna move on to our third trial, win or loss, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, win or loss, win or loss, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. We've got to do this for each one of the branches. So as you can see, our decision tree is quickly becoming quite cumbersome. And we only have four trials. We haven't even dealt with the loss category yet. So very quickly, we can see that our decision tree becomes pretty unruly and unmanageable, even with four trials. Now, if you were to ask to calculate the probability of exactly one success in four trials, there's going to be a number of different permutations and working your way through the probability of a probability tree, multiplying across the branches, is just going to be too slow um, and too prone to error. So we're going to look at another solution here. And of course, that is our binomial distribution. So compute the probability of exactly one success. This is B. So the probability that X is equal to one is equal to N factorial divided by X factorial times, whoops, N minus X factorial times the probability of success to the power of our no number of successes times the probability of failure to the power of n minus x. So the probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to 4 factorial, that's our number of trials, divided by 1 factorial times 4 minus 1 factorial. Our probability of success is 0 0.4. Our number of successes of interest is 1. Q is equal to 0 0.6, right? 1 minus 0 0.4 is equal to uh, 0 0.6 to the power of n minus x, which is 4 minus 1. So what we get here is the probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to 4 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 3 factorial times 0 0.4 to the power of 1 times 0 0.6 to the power of 3. So we can go ahead and we can start punching this into our calculator. So we get uh, 4 factorial divided by 1 factorial times 3 factorial, which is equal to 4 times 0 0.4 to the power of 1, which is of course 0 0.4, times 0 0.6 to the power of 3, which is equal to 0 0.216. So the probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to 4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.216. Gives us a probability that x is equal to 1 of 0 0.3456. So this is the probability that x is, a, is equal to exactly 1. So compute the probability that x is equal to 0. So we can do that. So C, the probability that x is equal to 0 is equal to n factorial. So we have four trials divided by 0 factorial times uh, 4 minus 0 factorial times 0 0.4 to the power of 0 times 0 0.6 to the power of 4. So 4 factorial divided by 4 factorial is equal to 1 times 0 0.4 to the power of 0, which is also equal to 1 times 0 0.6 to the power of 4. 
which is equal to 0 0.1296. So our final answer then is 0 0.1296, right? One times one times 0 0.1296, just as equal to 0 0.1296. Let's go up here. Let's look at what else we have. Compute the probability that X is equal to two. So D, the probability that X is equal to two is equal to four factorial divided by two factorial times four minus two factorial times 0 0.4. That's our probability of success to the power of our number of successes, which is two times 0 0.6 to the power of n minus x, so four minus two, which is equal to two. So what do we get here? We get four factorial divided by two factorial times two factorial, 0 0.4 to the power of two times 0 0.6 to the power of two. So four factorial divided by two factorial times two factorial, Is equal to 6 times 0 0.4 to the power of 2 which is 0 0.16 times 0 0.6 to the power of 2 which is 0 0.36 so we get 0 0.36 times 0 0.16 times 6 which is equal to 0 0.3456 so the probability that x is equal to 2 is 0 0.3456. We have a few more things. So compute the probability of at least one success. So the probability, the probability that X is greater than or equal to one is equal to one minus the probability that X is equal to zero, right? If we have at least one, that means we're not in a situation where the, there are no successes. So this is equal to one minus, we've calculated the probability that X is equal to zero right here. 0 0.1296, so one minus 0 0.129. So one minus 0 0.1296 which gives us 0 0.8704. That's our answer for E. And then finally, compute the expected value, variance, and standard deviation. So our expected value of X is simply equal to N times P. Our, num our N, our number of trials is four. Our probability of success is 0 0.4. Four times 0 0.4 is equal to 1.6. Our variance is equal to n times p times 1 minus p, which is also equal to n times p times q, which is equal to 4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. So 4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 gives us 0 0.96. And then finally, our standard deviation is equal to the square root of n times p times q, which is also equal to the square root of the variance of x. So we know that this is equal to the square root of 0 0.96 as calculated above. So the square root of 0 0.96 is equal to 0 0.9798. And there we have it. We have completed this question here. So we've drawn the decision tree. We've computed the probability of at least one success, no successes, two successes, at least one success. 
as well as the variance standard deviation and expected value. That's it for this video, but if you found that it helped to make statistics easy, consider showing your support by giving the video a like. And if you still need more help with statistics, then consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. I look forward to solving many more problems with you next time.